to be slaughtered. The trouble is, nobody ever trained them to go alone. It takes men to push a herd north. Men and time and sometimes pain. That's where I come in. I'm one of the men. Gil Faber, trail boss. used to it, keeps them from hearing things in that place. Jasper's crazy. I don't see any papers on him. Here's a photograph. What happened? He tried to kill me. Well, what for? Well, how would I know? Beats about time to bed down the herd anyway. We'll find out who he is when he comes around. That is, if he can tell us. Jim, Joe, let's put him to bed. Hey, boss. What have you done? We were just protecting ourselves, miss, and it took some doing at that. Harry? Harry? He'll come around all right. I'm sorry I had to bat him with a gun, but he didn't leave us much choice. Well, I'll answer for anything he did, any damage he caused. We took this off of him. Oh, that's my husband, Mr. Whitman's son. I'm Rose Whitman. Mrs. Whitman, my name's Favor. How do you do? I live at a ranch about a mile east from here. If you can help me get Harry into the buggy, I think we'll be able to make it home without trouble. Why don't trouble. you just rest here a while first? I'll have one of the men ride over and let your husband know what's happened. My husband passed away six months ago. Oh, sorry. Well, maybe I could ride back to your ranch and bring back one of your hands. Well, Mr. Whitman and I live alone now. Well, I'd better go with you myself then. Oh, no, there's no need for that. Mr. Whitman isn't always as violent as you just saw him. When his mind is clear, he's one of the gentlest people on Earth. He sure comes close to being one of the strongest. He was the strongest once, when he was a young man in the ring. So that's what he was doing, boxing, huh? He was a champion of England and Ireland. Sometimes when he hears something that reminds him of the day he was beaten, he loses control. I think maybe the shouting of your riders. Feeling all right? Harry? Harry, this is Mr. Favor and... Rowdy, Yates. They're friends of mine, Harry. I don't think Mr. Whitman is quite himself yet. I wonder, might I take you up on that offer after all? Certainly, Mrs. Whitman. Rowdy, you let the men know I'll be gone for a while, and then you follow on after us. Right. Not a word. Well, blame the silence on me, Mr. Favor, not Harry. No blame to anybody. Big was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Gritton. Then Broughton. That's right. I, 
and I broke Tom Hyer's jaw in that 30th round, Boston, 1846. You know, he was a very good man. I promised to meet him again. And, uh, of course, you know, I've got to soak these knuckles a little more. You see, they're not ready yet. Did a hire send it to me? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, it's his jaw. See, he needs more time for it to heal. Now, don't lie to him. I, I don't want him to feel small or bailey. Just tell him that I'm not ready either. Here's John's picture, Harry. It fell out of your pocket. If you're going back in training, you'll need your sleep. Ah, oh, there's a son to be proud of. A little small for bare knuckle fighting, but a fine heart, a good brain. I... You're breaking training, Harry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, gentlemen, for saying good night so early, but if you have the prize ring, you'll understand. Oh, we understand. Harry sleeps in the barn. He loves the smell of the hay. Mrs. Whitman, I know it's none of my business, but shouldn't you have a couple of hired hands around in case anything happens? It isn't that easy to find someone you can trust nowadays. Well, our trail map says we're close to a town named Rock Point. Don't you have any friends in there you could have come out? I don't get into Rock Point very often. My husband and I moved here just a month before he died. We never had a chance to make many friends. Aren't you worried about your safety? Oh, nothing will happen to me. You'll stay for supper. I have a stewing chicken. It'd sure be a relief from Wishbone Stew, but uh, we got work to do. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Well, thanks for putting yourself to all that trouble on my account. No trouble. We'll uh, tie up your team before we leave. Thank you. You're afraid, Harry. You're afraid, Harry. Get on your feet and fight. Coward. Get up, coward. Get up, coward. now, Harry. But I was in the barn. How did I get here? Well, you were walking in your sleep. You fell against the rain barrel. Oh. Now you go in the house and get some towels. Dry yourself off before you catch your death. Yeah. All right. The judge commit him, but I backed away from it. Judge gone yet? No, he'll be there until tomorrow afternoon. Well, it isn't a very easy decision to make. Well, it better become easy to decide, and real quick, too. Well, everybody in town likes Harry. I wouldn't have any witnesses. You've got two witnesses right here. The herd could get along with others for a day, anyway. Yeah, and there's that uh, stew and chicken that you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, Roddy, and I could sleep in the barn, go into town with you first thing in the morning. Well, uh, it'll be better. It'll be better for him. You know, I'd almost forgotten that luxury. What luxury, Mrs. Whitman? Having a man make up my mind for me again. Nice behaved town. Folks usually make a carnival out of court week. Carnival there. A few months ago, the town elected a new marshal. 
is a fire and brimstone man. It's his intention to make this town spotless. He do seem to be a man of his word. Well, look who's come to town. Hey, now. The only real woman in Rock Point. That's what them who knew her up in Abilene say. We had us a few buttes like that down to the keg house. Before your brother started scrubbing this town. You shut up about him. Well, I'll shut up, but if it wasn't for Marshall Thompson, we'd have us a town. Instead of a graveyard. the marshal had run her out of town. Not that one. She's too brazen to run. Just so you'll know, I worked in the Crystal Palace Saloon in Abilene. I warned my husband how people would feel. I'm sorry, Harry. We don't need these outsiders to help us, Rose. Let me stay. Everything will be all right. You'll see. The judge has a reputation for being a very smart man, Harry. We'll let him decide. a lot more of you in Abilene, Rose. Get your hands off me. Since when you've been so fussy. All right. Break it up. Break it up. You're under arrest, mister. For what? For starting a rough house. A what? It'll be a fine. Five dollars. It's worth it. Give that to the clerk. See that you get a receipt. Oh, Rose. These two saddle tramps working for you? We're pushing a herd north on the Sedalia Mazora Trail, mister. I haven't heard anything about a herd. Maybe you ain't been listening. Yes, he listens. Anything anybody says against me, he listens. Better not crowd her, Lou. She's one of our kind. Any of you people ever see these two before? I've never seen them, Lou. Maybe good at dealing cards or spinning roulette wheels? He's got it in his mind I'm going to open a saloon. Any man befriends me, he figures has got to be a card dealer or a stick man I'm bringing in. Greg, how about it? You seen these two before? In Silver City, I saw a man that looked like this one. Uh, I'm not sure. They smell like cowpokes. But you only have to walk through a cow yard to smell like that. Until you find somebody who's sure, we got business here and you're holding us up. Uh, just a minute. I'll take the guns. No, you won't. You're violating the law. No wearing of firearms within the limits of Rock Point. Give me the guns. You'll do a lot better, mister, if you ask nice. Do what the man says, Rowdy. Hear ye, hear ye. The First District Court of the United States is now in session. Judge James Cuff presiding. All right, court's open. First case. Your Honor. Yes? We'd appreciate it if you'd put the Whitman case at the top of your list. Well, what's your reason for this request? Mr. Yates and I are witnesses for Mrs. Whitman, but we're also pushing the herd north, and we're kind of pressed for time. Well, all right. If there are no objections, we'll take the Whitman case. Well, ma'am, what's your complaint? Well, Your Honor, this is pretty difficult for Mrs. Whitman. Maybe I could talk for her? Maybe you can. That is, if it's all right with her. Is it, ma'am? All right, go ahead and speak. Well, Mrs. Whitman is here about her father-in-law, Harry Whitman. Yeah, well, get on with it. She wants the court to make out papers to put him in the territorial asylum. She wants what? 
Now, Marshal, I must remind you that this is a court of law. You'll get your chance to talk at the proper time. I'd better. What is your reason for this request, ma'am? Well, for the last few months, especially since my husband died, Mr. Whitman has been getting continually worse. He's growing dangerous. I think it would be better for him to be put away somewhere where he can be taken care of. What's the matter, Rose? You getting tired of sitting up with the old man? And now I saw the man that said that. I want you to shut your mouth, mister, and keep it shut. I want to remind you again that this is a court of law. And dignity is going to be maintained as long as I'm in charge. What do you mean by dangerous, ma'am? He came mighty close to killing me, Judge. What kind of a filthy railroading trick is this? I've seen a lot of miserable human beings in my life, but these three beat them all. I know this woman, Judge. The whole town knows her. Sure, she wants to put the old man away. She's no nursemaid. Why don't you listen to the witnesses? What witnesses? A couple of saddle traps you picked up off the trail to do you a favor? Can you sit down. Sit down. Quiet. Old man. Do you know why you're here, old man? Well, it looks like my daughter-in-law has been listening to some outsiders who think I ought to be put away, sir. Uh, what is your name? My name is Harry Whitman. How old are you, Harry? I'm 62. Uh, you know what day of the week you was born on? I was born on Monday, December the 10th. Sir. Now, Harry, I'm going to ask you a very strange question. Do you know the difference between heat lightning and fork lightning? I, I don't know what makes the difference, but I know how the difference looks. Heat lightning lights up all the skies, but fork lightning makes jagged streaks like that. Mm -hmm. Harry, what town are you in? In Rock Point, sir. Do you think you know the difference between right and wrong? Yes, sir. Uh, Harry, suppose you were a judge, and two men were brought up in front of you, both of them claiming the same pig. What would be the first thing you'd do? Well, I'd find out which one was the liar. <laughs> suppose both of these men had a reputation for honesty, for telling the truth. Uh, then I'd kill the pig. Why, Harry? Well, because I'd sit them down both together to make friends over a nice pork dinner. <laughs> Quiet! <laughs> Quiet! Order. Why, this man is just as sane as anybody in this place. Petition denied. <laughs> Judge, you're making a mistake. There are a great many bare-knuckle fighters back east in this man's condition. Now, they don't put them away there, and I don't intend to put them away here. I don't know about that, but I do know that I saw him try to kill Mrs. Whitman. Look, Judge, it's for his own good as well as for hers. I can find no evidence on which to commit Harry Whitman to an institution. Case dismissed. Please. Please, it's best for him. He doesn't want to kill anybody. Uh, nobody here knows what he's like when he's not in his right mind. It's best for him. Anybody here ever see Harry try to kill? No. 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 She's trying to send him away. Order. Order in the court. Order. Order in the court. Just do as I say. Harry? I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone.
our guns, Marshal. Leaving us already, cowherds? For a while, Marshal. A while? You're leaving for good. Tell me, what is it makes you folks in this town so friendly? Long, hard hours of practice? You called it. Practice and experience. It's taken us a long time to scrub up this town, and we don't aim to have it all dirtied up by a couple of two-bit saddle tramps from off the Sedalia Trail. Tell you something, Marshal. Just seeing the way you treat your neighbors in this town, I know one thing. Don't worry about dirtying up your town. Couldn't get any filter than it is. We want to tell you how sorry we are about how it turned out. If there's anything we can do. Mrs. Whitman, if It's I... best to leave her alone, I guess. Don't worry about me. Tears in a woman aren't always what you think. Scum like that isn't worth crying over. I'm used to that kind. There's no reason why you should be. Hey there! Is you what you claim? Drovers? That's right. The marshal claims you're here to start a saloon with Rose Whitman. The marshal's a liar. The marshal's my brother. Well, then. You've got a liar in the family. <laughs> no, not Brother Lou. He's too upright for lies. Looking for wheels. Be a friendly town. Well, now, whenever was that? Before Lou Marshall made himself Mr. Law and Order in person. You mean there's nobody to stand in his way? The old cemetery full of people stood in the Marshall's way. That's a good wheel. We've got a dozen of them. We could use three if you could lend us a wagon to hold them in. Seven dollars apiece. It's good enough. Twenty-one. There's nobody in this town who side with a woman who needs help. Well, it is, mister. You side with her, the marshal just figures you're siding against him. Well, now, you think the marshal could stand it if uh, you rolled a wheel alongside of us? Wagon's just outside. Let's have it. How long are you going to keep milling this thing around your mind like a cat worrying a rat? You all right if we take the wheels back to camp before we go back to town? Yeah. What's the matter, Mrs. Whitman? Nothing. Well, you don't look like it's nothing. Your voice don't sound right, neither. I'm worried about Harry. He's up in the hills. I'm afraid something might happen to him. Oh, yeah. Well, what you need is a man around this place. I mean, someone else and Harry. I know. Well, you know, I... I just never rest if I didn't try to apologize for way. My brother and the rest of them clods acted toward you in court this morning. <laughs> you know, Brother Lou, he, he just don't understand human beings. I think a lot of people are getting sick and tired of his ways. But I, uh, I didn't come here just to apologize for my brother. 
I came to help. Help? Yeah. You haven't got enough money to take care of yourself and that father-in-law of yours forever. I want to help you get enough so you can. How? You want to get back east, don't you? You let go don't of you? me. You want to get back east and dress like a lady and spend money like you were something? Isn't that it, huh? Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. The only thing wrong is you can't do it. Not with a millstone around your neck. And that old man is a millstone, isn't he? You just can't shake him loose. What are you getting at? How much you figure this house and the barn, livestock and acreage is worth? Five. All right. All right, Dave. That's fine, Rose, fine. We got us a bargain? Yes. You'll find him up in the hills above the North Road. He always goes up there to brood like a child or a dumb animal. But you haven't told me, Rose. What I do? How do I get him riled up? All those years in the ring. He was in too long. Whenever he remembers that last time when they had to carry him out and took him two days to regain his senses. Now, wait a minute, Rose. I don't want to take advantage of you. I want this thing straight and above board. You got a pencil and paper? All you have to do is to write down that when and if you make a sale of this property after it's yours, I'm to get half. You see, I'm like you, Rose. I want to get away from this stinking town, too. And with $4,000, I can stay away for a long time. Or we could stay away for a long time. Why don't you tell me, Harry? What are you doing out here? Well, where else is there to go? Well, they give you a hard time in town. Ah. They don't understand. Nobody understands. I just want to fight again, even if it kill me. But the doctors say no. Yeah, sure, I know. Ah, uh, don't you worry about it anymore. Hyas did it. He knocked me out in that thirtieth round in Liverpool. Huh. See, I broke his jaw in Boston. And then I gave him another fight in Liverpool. He hit me so hard that I had to go to hospital. Some of the people said that I fell down on purpose. No. Yeah. I mean, some said I was a coward. People got no right to say that to you. I just want to fight again. I'll tell you what. I'll set you up a fight. Then you can show them off. Huh, Harry? Dave. You're my friend, Dave. show them. You said we're going to show them. I know, I know, but I want to set it up, see? we got to do this thing right, Harry boy, so everyone will know you're still champion. Now, come on. Ah, look at that. they got the ring and the dressing rooms locked up. That's my boy. Now you, uh, you go on in there and lie down, Harry. You get yourself some rest while I arrange things. 
Oh, well, you're good to me, Dave. It's a long time since anybody understood me. But my son understood me. He wouldn't allow anybody to call me a coward while he was alive. Everything's gonna be all right, Harry boy. You just rest up. Now I'm gonna close the door so no one will bother you. What are you doing? This, this is not a dressing room. This is your brother's jail. You're absolutely right, Harry. This is a jail. Well, why'd you lock the door? This is where you belong. Jail! What do you mean? What are you doing, Dave? This is what they do to quitters, Harry. Cowards! They lock them up! Oh, Dave, don't fool me. You know I'm all right. Sometimes I get mixed up a bit. And I've been hit so many times that sometimes I feel myself in, in the ring. I can see the lights go on and they go off again. Oh, sometimes I get mixed up so that I don't, just don't know where I am. But I'm all right, Dave. Let me out. You ain't never gonna get out, Harry. Not till you prove you can fight. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Harry, Let me out of look here. at this over here. Look Let here. Me out of here. Look, your picture's everywhere. And all the newspapers. Let Harry Whitman, king of the flatbacks. Oh, let me out of here. Come on. Look here. Put up I'm, your dukes. I'm the champion of England and Ireland. Everybody knows me. I'm Harry Whitman. Finn was the first champion. Then came Pipes. Then Griffin. Then, then, then Broughton. And I broke Tom Highest jaw in the 30th round. That was a fight. That was a fight when I broke his jaw. Let me out of here. Wait. Harry. Crowds in the way. Come on, Harry. Come on. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. Come on, Come on, champ. Hire's waiting to beat you to a pulp. I think I'll go home. You can't go home. Your son's gone. Don't you remember? He can't help you now. Leave me alone. Give me that picture. Come on, get up and fight, you miserable old fall down. Give me that picture. What kind of a champion were you? You're afraid to fight higher, ain't you? Ain't you? If you ain't scared, come on, let's see how you fight or fall down. Give me that picture. It's Dave Thompson. What is this? Sorry, Moose. He's dead. Dave. Dave! Come away from him, Lou. Two of you. Carry him inside. You had to come back, didn't you, Satatrap? You couldn't leave the thing alone. It took two of you to do it. this all wrong, Marshal. He was already dead when we came here. Here, he knows that. Well, speak up, you drunken Jasper. Look, Marshal, we're leaving the same way we came in. Somebody tries to stop us, somebody gets hurt. You two are gonna beg to die. I had plans for Davy. This was gonna be a decent town for him to grow up in. No more temptation. There's a tree down at the end of the street. Come on. Wait, wait. Lou, you can't do this. These men couldn't have killed Dave. Who else could have killed him? I loaned them my wagon this afternoon. I seen them ride out of town. They came back, didn't they? Well, that doesn't mean that... Lou, you cleaned up this town. Now, you can't do this. 
Better go on home, Mel. You're in my way. Maybe it's just as well I am in your way. Lou, it's been a long time since anybody tried to talk sense to you around here. You're pushing me, Mel. It was Dave they killed. Who said? Tanner, he, he just said that Dave was dead. Tanner saw them. He didn't say he saw it. Well, don't just stand there. Tell him the truth. They couldn't have done it. I stumbled over Dave on, on my way home. He was dead then. I ran to the barn. I saw these fellows pull up. And if they didn't do it, who did? I seen, I seen Harry Whitman run off as I come up. Harry. Harry Whitman. That's right. Harry Whitman. Anybody know where the old man might be? He only has one place to go. Anybody that follows me tonight is a deputy. Right now. Thompson, you already made one bad mistake. Don't make another. You men, don't let him lead you into this. Thanks to both of you for what you did. The old man went back to the farm. He's going after Rose. Better get there before they do. Come for the old man. You're bound and determined to lynch somebody. Is that it, Thompson? Doesn't matter much who. Me, Harry Whitman, anybody. Harry killed Dave. A man out of his senses killed Dave. He's no more responsible for what he did than a, than a gun would be. It takes something to trigger it, just as it took something to turn Harry Whitman loose. Every one of you men in that courtroom, too deaf to listen to Rose Whitman, had a hand in Dave's death. You made Harry Whitman your responsibility, and then you went home and you forgot about it. You're the ones responsible for Dave Thompson's death. All right, you've been listening to this saddle tramp spouting off. Now listen to me. I'll tell you what killed Davey. Filth and sin. You're letting a madman, a dance hall woman, and a couple of cowherds butt into our way of life. I took your dirty little town and scrubbed it till its face shone, and I can do it again. It has to be done again. Come on. Well, come on. Are you gonna let these two cowherds run your town? We came here to do justice. We ain't gonna help you, Lou. Time somebody stood up to you. You ain't any good for us anymore. Maybe you were once, but you're not anymore. Lou, we're not forgetting what you did for us. Sure, you cleaned up the town. You, you tamed it when it was wild. You made it a better place to live in, but you didn't stop at that. You had to keep right on ruling with an iron hand till we were so scared. We... We've been living our lives just the way you wanted us to, doing everything you wanted us to do. Why do you think we came here with you tonight? To, to help you because of your brother? No. We're here because not one of us had the guts to stand up to you. We were too afraid to speak up when you wanted us to lynch Harry here. Thank you, mister, for standing up to him for us. Come on, Lou. Let's go home. 
Oh, well, Marshal Thompson, you're not going without Harry, are you? Not after what he did to your brother. No. Mel's right. I was going to lynch a man. I don't deserve this. Not anymore. We'll take Harry with us, Miss Whitman. We'll take him to the doctor. To the doctor? What'll he do? Give him a pill, rest him up, and then send him back to me? I don't want him back here. I'm scared stiff of him. There's no call for you to talk like that, Ruth. I'm not mad. Sometimes my brain is a little hazy, and my head aches. Sometimes the taunt of people makes me hear the howls from the crowd, and I feel the bare knuckles against my face and the back of my head. And I gotta fight back, Rose. I'm not mad. You know that. I'm all right. Point is, Miss Whitman, maybe he won't have those spells anymore if the doctor treats him and rests him up. Well, none of us wants to see Harry sent away. You think those are just spells? I'll show you. Harry, do you know what they're all saying? They're all saying you're a coward. They're saying you're lying down because you're afraid. You're afraid of hire. They're all laughing, Harry, because they think you're a coward. It was you all along who wanted me put away. It was you that taunted me. You and Dave. I think you sent Dave to taunt me. Well, if it means that much to you, I'll go. I'll willingly go, Rose. Don't you want to say goodbye to me? Gentlemen, take me to the place she wanted me to go. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt anybody anymore. One that hurt her the most. The least I can do is stay with her for a while. Charlie? Mm -hmm. 